Hey fam, what's up? I just wanted to say hi tonight. I also wanted to let you guys know that aside from everything I'm talking about about the heart tonight, I'm going to be talking about shadow work to do with the heart. I went to an amazing um, situation in Texas. I thought it was a real blast. But I do want to point out, and I'm going to put this in the description box below, I'm going to be doing an interview with John Clemens, which is another Chosen. I watch a lot of Chosens on YouTube. I try to think of how we can unite all of us because I think it's about uniting the leaders too. So getting to know different people that walk the walk, I wanted to get to know him too. We've actually connected on a different level uh, several months back. I caught him in dream time. Long story, but super cool cat. And I'm going to be posting the link for tomorrow. It's going to be 7.30 um eastern time and 6 30 central time so catch it if you can it's going to be hot and i'm going to get into this right now and i'm going to do some cards as well stay tuned me just want to say hi to all of Wednesday. you today i was in texas i was celebrating the lovely solar eclipse uh that i don't think many people saw you know weather permitting and all but um you know that was kind of funny that you know it's a monumental event, yet not many of us got to see it. I was literally in Texas, right under the the cross of it, and weather permitting, I was there an hour before, an hour or some time after. It was really beautiful. I was at a Unite the Collective get together in Texas for the solar event, and it was quite pleasant. I managed to win two items at the raffle. It was a uh, you know a Flower of Life uh, EMF disc. Uh, which I'm asking how to figure out how to charge without any sun over here. I did email, so we'll see what happens. I also got a beautiful, um, <clears throat> I believe it was some type of roll-on um, perfume. It was quite lovely, so that was really nice. But I know that it has more sentimental feelings, so I do apologize. But for those of you that did watch my videos, it was a very monumental, powerful time for me to use the, and... and um, harness the power of the eclipse to actually go after something that i was after and like i've said in the past i'm going after this heart expansion this heart growth this heart opening uh, in order for me to then you know work with my eye better i need to fully uh go after my heart so i had to do some very very perplexing heart uh chakra and heart um uh shadow work that's what it was so i'm gonna actually talk about what i did and maybe this is something that I'm not saying you always have to use a, a solar eclipse to do. You can work on this individually, but a solar eclipse helps amplify something of a closeout like this. And because I had to close it out and then regain a certain version of my heart that I was after, um, I do believe that happened when I entered my door. I felt that that sense of ease and um, it was it was beautiful. So I can honestly say that I do feel the closure did occur. And it's unfortunate because this was a very long and arduous cycle for me to analyze. You have no idea. And I have to give kudos to a patron of mine on this website. He, I mean, on YouTube, uh, he inspired the idea that got me to start this shadow work. And it was very, very heartfelt. Thank you very much, my brother. Uh, but basically, it was to figure out and channel all the different uh, persons in my life that had contributed to me not being able to achieve this closeout. So what I have here, and I'm going to show you guys, is I just basically draw the heart card. It is a formation of what I'm seeing with the heart, okay? So I made it like a lotus flower, but just bear with me. Every petal that I'm describing here has some different closeout um, emotion to tackle or fear to face in order to sense or feel the emotion that is present when you are engaged with the fear so that you can see how you can overcome it. You can also see if maybe it's something you need to still work on uh, or if it's something that you feel that you faced and you've challenged and you can move on. So each one of these petals takes some work, okay? So, um, one of the ones that I first had to challenge, because you have to understand, I worked first on my throat, okay? Like when I first came on to this path, and I'm sure a lot of my brothers and sisters here, those that have claimed their voice, okay? High five to all of you. Those of you that are on the chosen path, you understand what I'm saying. There was a point in time, yeah, sure you spoke, but then there came a point where you're like, yeah, now I speak. 
So it's like you got your throat chakra on and the ways you did that were different than the ways you tackled the heart. So that's why the throat chakra comes on mainly when you start speaking your truth. There's certain elements that you can use, not maybe so much knowingly something that comes from within, but it's also something that you can keep mindfully in your in your thought process when you are trying to channel uh, challenge other chakra systems within your heart. Like for me also as well, like let's say with my sacral, I know that uh, me shutting down more of a sexual nature, like I am celibate. So I also use that power to channel creativity. I, um, my solar plexus, I use to channel um, my, I would say, mainly to do with my intuition, which is very interesting because usually people would associate it. But because of the style of intuition as an empath that I faced, I work a lot with my solar plexus as well. And then the rooted chakra, I feel, came from actually formulating and understanding the idea of patience because you root in yourself and you start to, um, I think it does formulate at different points of time because I do feel like the root can always grow. It can always expand in terms of its, its um, rootedness, if you want to put it that way. But the heart is something that I've had to navigate. And you may not understand what I'm saying by this, but please understand it does work. Okay, challenging these things works. Okay, so I have understanding here. Okay, so what that means is understanding not only of others around you, but understanding of yourself. And I know that sounds cliche, but what does it mean to understand yourself? Okay, understanding of yourself is also understanding your flaws. Understanding yourself is also knowing your low points. Understanding yourself is knowing where your strengths are, where your weaknesses are. Understanding yourself is knowing that the low points didn't represent you. There's so many waves of one petal has so many levels to it, but it's only as respect, respectively as far as you want to dig into it or you want to flow into it, okay? But that's what it means for me, okay? Now, when I moved over, I put this one in competition guilt, okay? What I mean by competition guilt is that Within our lives, when we don't have fullness in ourself, we always feel like we have to be positioned against others to feel gratification within our achievements. And the real thing is, is that once you do step into your fullness, there is no one that you really can or should be competing with solely because you are in a realm of your own self. Okay, like, okay, I'm going to explain this in, in a different fashion. If you are in a competition, it is only with you because realistically, like the only way you could be your best self is by uh, accepting that you are it. Okay, this is all it's going to ever be. So I'm not saying like don't get into competitions like races, etc. I'm saying the competition that you feel outside of yourself is not really real. The competition is all within you. Okay, because you feel like you have to uh, figure out who you are in the world from um, this feeling of competing with others to find understanding or a claim within yourself. And that is the falsity or the illusion that a lot of us live in. The thing is, is that if you are your unique self, no one can be you. So how can anybody compete in a race that is designed for you? If that makes sense because you're the creator. So it's like, if you take away that, um, that right and nobility within yourself, you're basically opening up to the idea of other creators co-creating in your existence. So if you know that you are the best version of you that you could possibly be, not to say that you shouldn't look to others for inspiration, but at the same time, it's like, how else would they be in your shoes enough to know how you would do the best in your challenges, in your life, in your world? Do you get what I'm saying? We're all not coming from the same footing. We're all not coming from the same nature. We're all not coming from the same upbringings, etc., etc., etc. So therefore, the the playing ground that we're all on is different. You cannot judge someone who is going through different terrains, let's say, and say that they are all equal. So within the same right, you cannot compete with others because you are truly just competing with yourself. You're competing with yourself and or maybe others within your own terrain. But even then, that's not even necessary. So that's why I say competition guilt is once you realize this within your own heart that you are, you know, love worthy. You are someone who 
um, is within your own right of self, you realize that you have to get rid of that guilt of competition uh, for those that you tried to compete with and for um, what you did to your inner self or your inner heart by competing for that love. We do this even as children. We compete for love. You get what I'm saying? Like we compete for our parents' love, others' love. It's really not necessary because if you're just yourself, you should know that you're worthy of love. So it's kind of an oxymoron in a way, but that's how you get through fighting through comp competitive guilt. Okay? The next one is forgiveness. Now, forgiveness, yes, if we do understand it is difficult to forgive those that have wronged you. And maybe for some, it's not hard to forgive those that have wronged you. But realistically, this is more pointed towards the self, more so. Because there are things, and um, let's say, for me, like I've told you guys in the past, I had a really, really, really hard time letting go of my my ascension journey last time. That I felt heavily, very guarded in that pedal of the heart that was closed down for a long time. It wasn't until I reached this time that I truly feel like I opened up that forgiveness pedal because I was able to forgive myself through God's love. Okay, I realized that God never left me. I realized that that was something that was innately mine, that's innately yours. So when I was able to release this pedal, it was a beautiful moment. I realized that I was forgiving myself for all the wrongdoings I thought I judge myself for in the eyes of God, but really it was just God always saying, I was right there with you. You just needed to forgive you and reach for me, meaning reach inside yourself and find your forgiveness for you. Okay. That's what that pedal really means. But what I will say is how I got to that level of forgiveness of myself was forgiving others that have wronged me. I, I'm not kidding. I must have put a list of people that I had wronged in my life. And this was like two years ago. And I sent lists. I sent emails to people. I sent um, Facebook messages. I sent letters. I, I did all kinds of stuff. Several people. And the thing is, is that it was a way for me to start on this process of forgiveness. So don't ever discount that. Forgiving others is huge when it comes to releasing the heart. Because what it does is it also starts to target different ones, right? Because when you do this, you'll notice, okay, the next one is self-identity from no closure. A lot of us start to close up the heart a lot. When, let's say, for example, you go through a relationship and it ends and you may not get any resolution. It doesn't matter if it's a partner, if it's a loved one, it could even come through death. In this one, the no closure thing. Okay, so death is another one that you don't really get it truly because maybe you did have that heartfelt moment with that loved one passing away or maybe you didn't. So that's one version. Or it could be a, a loved one that left you in a relationship and you never got an answer as to why. The reason why I bring this one up is because it's something that a lot of us face. Or maybe it was like a childhood friend that you never got to see again and you never knew what happened to them. There's no closure. There's no, there's no understanding. Okay, so see over here how I have understanding? These kind of work together as well. So each one of these petals coincides with the other petals in some degree. So that's why it's, it's important to individually tackle them, but also understand how they merge together. So let's say, for example, you have no closure. You go through, like, obviously time passes, you move through it, right? But what it does affect is self-identity. Because the thing is, a lot of us like to get those resolutions to kind of understand things understand things to kind of get a sense of our self-awareness back because it's like without that imprint of another person let's say right there with us who was in entrapped somewhat with our self-identity um you start to realize that you're looking for that confirmation of self of self identity from another person so the thing is is that the no closure is like who are you without the closure can you still traverse life and this can happen in so many ways okay because for me like i also like what i faced this uh, at this get together 
was encountering a lot of these different emotions and how I was going to face them and how I was going to release them. Because I also needed to get rid of, like I said, this 21 year cycle ending with certain persons, um, you know, releasing me and or vice versa. So it was like, I was touching upon ones like um, rejection, abandonment, this closure one. So it was like understanding that even if I were to face it or not, or not face it, like those are always the two possibilities. Like I said, the yes or the no reaction, the Schrodinger's cat situation, it's always like that. So for me, um, this represented facing some of these petals that I have here. So that I would know in the face of these things, how would I be? Would I still find my self-acceptance? Would I still have a secure nature? Would I still forgive myself? Like, that's what I'm trying to say. You use the fear projection or what you assume in your heart of hearts to be something of a monument, monumental fear-based set of emotions that you don't normally want to go and get yourself involved in but you need to do it so that you can see where on your flower how many of the petals you've managed to um, either flourish further and or close off because it's complete it's a whole it's a wholehearted heart so that was what I wanted to get to so secure nature is another one because in the face of fear Sometimes you have to understand like your heart is where your um, your fight comes from in a sense, right? Like, you know how you say like there's people that are out there that are so passionate. I have been called passionate a lot of times. Like when I get really passionate and I'll have to say this, like I um, have one of my attributes on my, on my one of my hires that is full of passion, <laughs> but a, a, more of a darker seated passion, but still passion. Uh, at the same time, I would say that what passion does, it is very ferocious. It is very all-encompassing. It is all something that is very scary for some. Like, for example, with me, with one of my abilities, I have this ability to kind of coerce um, someone's childlike self to come out. And I notice that when that person gets vulnerable with me and allows their childhood self to come out, a lot of people tend to like shut down like transformers, formers in disguise. And I have to see that a lot. You know what I mean? And it's like I, I feel for them because for that bright, shiny moment, I got to see their childlike self. So it's hard for me to discern who they are with the mask on a lot because I'm like, oh, I already saw who you really are. So it's like, don't worry. I don't care about the demons. I don't care about the dark. I don't care about none of these things. It's like, I already know who your childlike self is. So it's like, we can cut the shit. You know what I mean? So I kind of have a hard time with people because sometimes they will close up and maybe um, get fearful of me. I tend to make people jittery. I tend to make people nervous and that's okay. Sometimes I notice that the nervousness comes because some of their heart is still on a tilt and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. We can all tilt and go back to normality or neutrality at any moment in time, especially if we do this type of work. So the other ones are rejection, abandonment, and these two are huge, okay? So I was also facing those ones of rejection because I was closing off what people call like a karmic soul tie, something to that effect, because the thing is, is that there's been a representation of this within my life while facing certain things in my life. And it doesn't take away from what I have to strive for, which is self-acceptance. So if you notice on this side, understanding secure nature, self-acceptance, you'll notice that these ones tend to be more of a fluid, like nicer nature. Whereas these ones over here tend to be a little darker when it comes to the rejection, the abandonment, things like that. Because we all know what it's like to be rejected. Even if it was in the schoolyard, you know, and they didn't pick you to be on the baseball team or whatever the case, you got rejected or at least you felt that way. It starts really, really young. So that rejection pedal is huge. Like that's a reason why some of us are fearful to do things like even go for that job interview, even go and ask for that raise. People don't realize that tackling these fears, right? So that's even as easy as that. That's what I mean by tackling the fear. So let's say, for example, you think you're not going to get the, the raise. And the reason why is because you never really go for it because you're scared of being rejected or being told no, okay? 
this is how you work on those things so that when you go do it, the worst they can say is no, but in your heart of hearts, you might be so petrified and it's because you're still working on this rejection. Some other people don't mind being rejected as easily. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, if that's something that you're still challenged with, think about this when I'm talking, that each one of them reflects within your life in a different degree. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because should you get through that fear, like let's say, for example, you go and ask for that raise and you don't get rejected. You know how great you'll feel? You will open up that pedal just a little more. Because you remember a time when you were younger where these things did not exist. Your heart was open. It was only after a certain point of actually f facing some of these things that your heart started to shut down. So abandonment is another one. Okay, abandonment, that could even range from people that maybe lost their parents early. It could even be when friends didn't pull through in certain tight situations that you really needed help. Abandonment can happen even when you're in the workplace because you feel like you may be taking on more uh, duties, etc., and people aren't there to help you. Abandonment might be in, within your own family. Maybe you feel like the black sheep or you're always the one that got neglected. Abandonment comes from a lot of different places. And even some people, they feel like they've been abandoned by God. I've heard that a lot on my channel. A lot of people keep saying that, oh, where's God? Where's God? Well, I'm trying to show you ways to get closer to God. Because God's in your heart. God's all in you, okay? And the more you get to know you, the less abandoned you feel because you feel whole within yourself. I, I hope that's getting through. So the reason why I'm doing all of this is because I want to get to this I am presence. So it's like well, every time you challenge your chakras and you go through all these pedals of the chakra, let's just say, of fear sets and things you need to achieve. Like if you think about this, it's kind of like a little... Um, homework or work plans or, or soul work plans that you make for yourself you challenge yourself with so that you can learn and grow and experience so you can cultivate a way of actually facing it in its entirety to have it open back up again because the thing is the power comes in the vulnerability the power comes in opening this because the thing is the fearlessness that you gain from achieving you know fear sets and conquering them the more equipped you become to handle different new things and challenges in your life, which I am going for because I am trying to get to a place where I need to use my words. I need to bring out my message. I need to try to show to lead people into a place where they can achieve success within themselves. And I think even when I went to that event, like that was something that kind of rang true with me. I'm always like, you know what? We need to unite the collective, but we also should try to unite the leaders too because showing everyone how to become a leader I also think is very important so that's what I want to say so I'm going to start off with the cards and I'll get back with you guys I hope you enjoyed this when you're thinking about what's most important you always have to understand that you ultimately are the only one walking your walk so if you're walking into something brand new and if it seems terrifying sometimes that's the place you need to be because you will grow you will see so many parts of yourself how you reacted how you actually um, handle oneself in a situation or facing something that you were previously terrified to. That no, it's like kind of like when you're in a nightmare, right? And you face your villain in the nightmare. You know what I mean? There's a sense of like glory inside of you that's like, okay, like I can, I can push forward. And I'm not trying to say that that's a correlation to what I, I face, not even in the slightest. It's just like I'm giving you an example to me, to me, because it's like, I would say this, the last inter intercession, it was just not my best self. So to present my best self, you know, it was a little intimidating and it was different because I did face this idea of like being rejected or like not getting, getting through, you know. And it's like, huh, even though that may have been the case, it doesn't matter because realistically, it's like I had to overcome it. That's the point. It's like I, I had to look at both realities at the same time walking into this. I had to see both projections of who I could become either way. And both times I told myself I wanted to be like this. So it didn't matter what the reaction was. You know what I mean? Didn't matter for the reactor. 
You know what I mean? Because <laughs> dad's got a sense of humor. I'll say that much. Jeez. <laughs> when I heard that on the plane coming home, I was like, oh. I was like, he keeps asking for it. <laughs> I didn't know what he meant. I didn't know what he meant. I swear. I had, I had to you, Father. I had to you, Father. I did not know what he meant. Now that I do, friggin' hilarious. That's all I can say. I didn't even see myself like that. Now I do. <laughs> oh, it's jokes. It's an inside joke. It's an inside, you know, father-daughter joke. But anyways, um... I honestly want people to know that we are truly loved. I know the world feels like they're always in this rat race. This time will never pass. And it's not. I'm telling you, go within. Get higher. I know this sounds like a, an oxymoron. Go within. Get higher. It's so true. The farther you dig, the more you try to self-express. The more you actually go after the things that you're so terrified of, there is true release. And it's like that propels into your consciousness and your consciousness develops your outer world. You'll notice the more you strive for things within yourself, the more the world reflects what you want to see. So with that said, I'm going to do some energy cards. I don't know which ones I should do. What do you guys think? Okay. I usually do the energy oracle card, so I'll stick with that. Oldie but a goodie. Yeah, I hope you guys are all doing okay. This is going to be such an interesting time. I met some really cool people, but I also feel like it was just this for everybody. I, I don't think there was a place on the earth that did not feel that shift. And if you didn't feel that shift, as someone who does feel, trust me, it was a shift. Especially if you were preparing for something. Like, let's say you were in the midst of using that energy to uh, for a shift. You know, you can, like, piggyback off of something. It's a, it's a good energy to do it. But I personally think that it was a, a really good event to attend. And I look forward to seeing more. But sometimes, like, you know, I didn't realize why I was there initially. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I do kind of know how I got there. Because it was like, originally, I wasn't going to go. Originally, I was like, I don't know. I had to stare at the face in the, like, honestly, I had to. Oh, I'll be, I'll be honest. There's a saying, like, uh, pride cometh the fall. And I personally feel like I let my pride get the best of me when I was making this decision. Because obviously when you use things like pride, you're deflecting from pain. Um, when you do that, first card out, goddess of the moon. Okay. Yeah, I feel like when you, when you let your pride come out, it's because you're deflecting from a pain. You're trying to protect the pain. Um, so for me, the reason why I was prideful was because I was like, oh, like, the audacity like why should i and I, I was like okay ashley slow your roll this is a an exercise in growth you must not look at it that way and i really had to humble myself when making that decision and you know what i made it i had a life experience come in that was so ironically beautifully placed in time for me to make that decision yes or no decision and I swear, Metatron has records. It was the most funniest shit I've ever seen. Like, I honestly can't even put it into words what took place that night when I had to make that decision. And then you know what? Soros provided the rest of the, the way there, and that was nice. So um, it was ultimately where I was supposed to be. I kind of know now why. <laughs> it's really... Haven't done that job in a long time. But it was nice. It was nice. It was nice to get back to my roots. You know? It was nice. Anyways, so we've got the goddess of the moon blossoming abundance. Still sounding good. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, guys. I keep getting, like, a lot of cards coming out. But I wonder what you guys did. What did you guys do during the eclipse? Anybody have some transformations? I'd like to know. 
I'm sorry I'm just kicking it today. It's just like a shake it off type of energy I've got right now. Oh yeah, yeah, they keep falling out in threes and fours. Maybe that's a symbol for things being very jumbled in people's minds, maybe. Oh, there we go. Patience again. See, we're getting this patient card. It seems like, I don't know, that seems to be the motif of a whole cycle of ascension. It doesn't seem like you can get away from patience. You know what I mean? You're always going to have, ooh, this one just like, and adjacent possibilities again. Huh. Well, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And the temple path. Beautiful cards tonight, guys. Jeez. Okay, so we got the goddess of the moon. Blossoming abundance. Patience. And adjacent possibilities. To land on the temple path. Now, if I'm just looking at this, okay, so goddess of the moon. The moon is illumination, and if you actually look at this card, it kind of looks, I know you guys can't see it too well, maybe, but there's actually like a crescent, so it's actually seeming like the sun when it does come into the apex of the moon as well. Um, and what I would say is that, <laughs> I know this sounds weird, but what I'm getting from this, it's like, see how she's holding it? It kind of reminds me of a basketball when you're going to like do, do like a basketball shot. So it's like maybe she's she's launching into this idea of this equation of of this balance that has come forth from this crossing. Because I do feel, like I said last week, that the moon is us releasing a lot of the um, hidden parts of ourself. It's releasing the hidden attributes that we don't want to look at. It's also um, illuminating in some respects what is hidden in the dark. Okay, so... I think what the goddess of that would be someone of true power that would know how to see through maybe that type of behavior. She would know how to see through the darkness and she would know how to see right to the darkness. You know, because that's something some of us are capable of doing. I've been one to do that from time to time. Um, blossoming abundance. Like, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So maybe if we release some of these inner... And another thing I will say about her is, like, I know it looks backwards in the camera, but she's actually looking to the future. So I think there is this, this in sense of embodying this acceptance of releasing certain um, negativities or things that we didn't want to accept in ourselves and or the dark parts of our soul that we have never wanted to face that could be hidden within the moon. You would find that there is some respective illumination that comes from even an eclipse. But I would say the sliver of the moon also represents that type of light within the darkness. And what that can create, because you are releasing it, like I said, she's kind of like lollying it out. Because if she's maybe releasing it, I think that the blossoming abundance comes through because you start to see that you can move and shift into different ways of being because of what you've released. And now you no longer are burdened from that negative nature and or not negative, but it could be seen as also a shift of negativity from being negative to positive because sometimes negative things can also create positive um, positive momentum. So please know that. And I think as we come into this blossoming abundance, because blossoming doesn't mean that it's here right now. Blossoming means that it's still in its nature. It's still in its state. It's still in a point of time that needs to flourish and needs to come out to its full flagrante, if you want to put it that way. So it's still in a stage of producing, growing, becoming that abundance. Because abundance is something, like I said, it just keeps multiplying. It's not something that, um, you know, degrades. So you have to respectively understand that this blossoming abundance, even if you look at it, it's got like all kinds of weeping willows. It's got all kinds of ivies, crawlers. It's things that will just continue to flourish. So keep that in mind. And mostly what we need to work on is our patience because like I said, some of these things take time. So I'm getting this feeling of time all through this. That is my overall feeling, at least with these three cards. So, and oh, wow, I say that, but even look, you know what I mean? There's a clock right there, you know, time. Because patience, they say, is the virtue. But the reason why it's a virtue is because you're sitting it still in time. Time is an illusion. So it's like actually by absorbing the idea of patience, it does not matter what time it is because you know you'll be in the state of patience that makes sense it's an eternal state 
So, <laughs> because it's like you're either patient or you're acting impatient. Like, there's no, you know what I mean? You're not like just a little patient. It doesn't work like that. It's like it's a state of being. So, it's one of those eternal states that once you turn it on and you accept that you are patient, then you are in that mode of patience. And then you will continually do that until you are in, in, become impatient. Like, you turn it the opposite direction. So, like an on and off switch. But... Through moving in that state of um, trajectory, meaning that you are okay with it being slow, you are okay with it maturing, you are okay with it evolving in its own possibilities, that would mean that other possibilities will come into flow for you because the thing is, is that let's say you release certain things so that you could get some result or a result, maybe one. This is showing you that with that time spent, an evolution that has passed, you will start to see adjacent possibilities that maybe you weren't even aware of. So I would personally say that even as you're going through this and things may not be at its total peak of illumination now, there will come a time where you will have multiple doors open to you. So, And you will realize that one of those doors may be towards the temple path, which is the I feel like the way home, personally. The temple path, you know, there's so many degrees of understanding that people have to go through to walk certain paths. And I don't know if there is one fixed one, but I do believe that there is one that you yourself may have chosen in your ultimate soul evolution. But I do feel like this is a more sacred one, the temple path. So maybe this is this path to you is sacred. So maybe after you've gone through all this, situation throughout some time you will find that you are stepping and what i will say if you notice about these two cards which i love see how it's like slow and slow growth or slow growth style plans it's the same here with the temple path ivies etc so it's like it gives me the idea that something is more harvested something is longer awaited and if you do strive for that longer awaited path, maybe that's the one that will lead you to the best po uh, potential possibility. And that is all I've got for you tonight. This is a Friday night. Please, if you are interested, I'll be live at 5. No, I'm joking. I'll be live at 7.30 with John. I think it's 6.30 Central Time. I'm on East Coast Time, so it's 7.30, but it's 6.30 uh, his time, Central Time. So I'll post a, a link in the description box. So I know I only got 57 of you, but if you guys are interested, please, please, please join. It can hurt hear another brother's way of being and who knows. Maybe I'll find out new things. He'll find out new things and we'll find out together. Have a good night, guys. Good night for now.